Good day everyone, Complaining Gamer here. Welcome to a potential new series called The Good, The Bad and The Ugly, where we take a look at the current state of emulated games and dive into the details of what works, what doesn't and what is plain broken. Make sure to comment down below if you enjoy this series and want it to continue. Today we're going to explore the world of Fatal Frame 5, Maiden of Blackwater in Simu a Wii U emulator. Did you know, in PAL regions, the game is actually known as Project Zero, Maiden of Blackwater. Project Zero, Maiden of Blackwater, water, water, With Simu 1.9.1 Patreon release, the latest iteration of the emulator, we see the never-ending journey toward game compatibility continue, and this includes improvements when it comes to Fatal Frame 5. The good. Jumping right into performance, using no additional graphic packs and running the game natively at 720p, I was able to easily navigate the menu, opening cutscenes and enter the main story with no obvious issues. Visually, it didn't look bad at all. It should be noted that my first trial was done on the EU version of the game and once again in Simu 1.9.1. Without having access to a pre-built shader cache, I was surprised to see a fairly stable 30fps with minimal stuttering when building the cache manually. However, it did not take long for obvious glaring issues to arise which we will come to shortly. Other positive points revolve around fairly consistent cutscenes and a camera which can use the motion controls provided by the Simu add-on Simu hook made by Raiko. I should note however that unless you're using a DualShock 4 controller, simultaneous gameplay and photographs are going to be extremely awkward. The final positive in my opinion is the fact that the game is genuinely quite scary. The bad. Without being too harsh, we must remember that an in-development emulator is going to suffer from a plethora of issues, so my comments are merely observations of a given game's current state and not meant as overly negative judgments. So, the bad, the first of which was scrambled text boxes which I found could strangely be read by opening the select option screen, so technically if you regularly press select you can actually follow instructions. Alternatively I discovered that the text has less issues if you use the gamepad view. Audio was an interesting mixture of sounds that worked and others that didn't. It seemed random which element would break. What would typically happen was ambient noise and atmosphere would be fine, but it would be accompanied by digital incomprehensible static often but not exclusive to the voices. Whilst unpleasant, sound wasn't a huge deal breaker. A minor visual bug relates to a dotted grid which goes across your character. One thing to be wary of is in some instances loading the game with the gamepad view active can potentially lead to crashes, so for less headaches turn it off before loading any game. As a final addition to the bad, I should say that graphical glitches came in many forms and sometimes at random but often particularly connected to the use of the camera. As an interesting side note, I found that the use of any graphic pack actually caused the main titles to just glow green for some reason. The Ugly When it comes to the ugly, there is a heck of a lot of stuff to talk about. First of all, Don't look up. For some reason, looking at the sky would always cause the game to become unplayable. It would lead to a geometry shaped disco dance at one frame per second and never recover. Not only that, the low FPS also somehow brought my computer to its knees, rendering it unusable. Now the game is designed to be scary, but I'm pretty sure the developers didn't intend for these types of scares, which include terrifying moments from nightmare inducing bursts of sound as well as faceless people during cutscenes. Soft locks, hard locks, Kensington locks, warlocks are all a pain in the backside. Fatal Frame on Simu is synonymous with crashing in the mansion after the photography tutorial. Now I was under the impression that improvements had been made but once I reached the mansion there it was as always unable to get past. This started me on a mission to get past this section and nothing I tried worked until Fooney 
shout out to Funi on Discord, reminded me that changing CPU mode to interpreter in CMU can sometimes help with certain issues. Guess what? It worked, but I now had to slog through 1 to 10 FPS gameplay, desperately trying to trigger the next autosave. The idea was simple, get past the broken section, autosave, then change the CPU mode back. Trust me when I say this was a painful experience, which I did indeed get through after unlocking a door with a key. Unfortunately, this was only a momentary solution until the next crash, at that point I'd had enough and just turned it off. If you remember earlier, I said that the initial test was done on the EU version of the game, which was locked to trial only. So I did my due diligence and tested the US version of the game as well and found identical performance and yes, the infamous crash in the mansion. The only difference being that the US version can be found with DLC, which unlocks the full version of the game. Conclusion. In terms of readiness, the current state of Fatal Frame isn't great. In short, it runs. Nothing more, nothing less. If you're willing to struggle through a plethora of sound and graphical glitches at 0 to 10 FPS in interpreter mode of CMU 1.9.1, then this is the game for you. For those of you who aren't psychopaths, Fatal Frame is a definite pass for now whether you play the EU or US version of the game. It is in desperate need of compatibility and optimization improvements before you should even consider attempting to play it. So there you go people, the good, the bad and the ugly for Fatal Frame 5. If you would like this series to continue, please leave a comment down below and let me know. If you enjoyed the content, remember to leave a thumbs up, it really helps out the channel. If you enjoy what I do and want to come back and see more, please feel free to subscribe. Other than that, I've been The Complaining Gamer, take care, have an awesome day and I will see you next time.